pretty fellas are buckets. Tonight I'm in Moville. I drove the whole way to Moville for a burger. So we're going to have a mukbang or whatever you call it. It's nice and quiet apart from that car being stolen. Um, it's a lot different than been in the city and sometimes I go to these smaller towns and the countryside to get a break from it all as I told you in the last video I'm not feeling so good and I've been in the house all day and I don't feel so well you know sitting at home so I thought getting out will help me you know There's Biddy's takeaway where I'm going to get my burger. There's a, an old picture inside the takeaway. Not all those people. I'm not 100% why there's such a crowd. Shout out to Biddy's of, what's the name of this fucking place? <laughs> Shout out to Biddy's of Moville. Mm, that was a nice burger. Right, what I want to do. What time are we? We didn't, we didn't fall. No! No, no, no. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to go to the next town over, which is Greencastle. We're going to walk along the pier and I'm going to show you the boats. It's better than sitting at home. Because I was doing... I was doing fuck all at home anyhow. Well... Yeah, you would have to turn red right when I pulled out. Like. I hope you don't get too much wind. That window over there is... Um, is not working. It's held up by a big suction cup and it's... There's a gap. But, uh, yeah, I've been sitting at home. Uh, today I made a kind of a, an app uh, sound file thing. I'm not into apps, but I was doing fuck all else, so I decided I would give it a go. And I'm very happy with it. Well, whether I use it or not is another thing. You know, it was better than just sitting at home doing that thing. I have other things I could be doing, like, but... I... Do you know when you're not feeling great? Not physically, men well, physically and sort of mentally. You just, you can't be arsed doing anything. And lately I couldn't be even arsed going out and filming. The very thing that keeps my keeps my mental health in good condition. I couldn't be arsed even doing that. And that's the first time since 2017 that that's happened. Which 
is very concerning. But the fact that I decided to go for a spin tonight is my way of fighting that inner challenges. Too far away from the next town over, which is Greencastle. We filmed there before. Um, I did actually film on the pier in, the t in town and that, but it was very windy and that, and the video was a bit shit. But hopefully, a bit better luck tonight, sort of thing. Uh, me and Rachel actually drove just to Greencastle to walk on the pier last week, just to get out of the house, you know. Rather than sitting home watching television, watching the same old shite. So. Um. Yeah, I don't like feeling like this. see it well from here. We're right across the water there and you'll see that long light. That actually is McGavery Prison and it's like it's like Northern Ireland's area 51. I was down there once and it's sort of it's the first place that I've ever driven to right where you drive into a little village and you drive along the street and then you come to a gate and everything just stops. You have to turn back. Do you know? You know usually one road leads to another and that. When you get out to that point, you just come to a gate and it just stops. And in behind that is military property and that. And I had a camera with me when I was used to do videos for Facebook. And it was like one of those Area 51 videos where the truck comes up over the hill and they're on top of the hill looking down at you. You know, it was quite weird. There's actually a kind of a round tower along the side of the beach too. So someday we'll get to go there somewhere, you know, and have a look around. 
but we're gonna have a look at some boats. I don't think we need uh, night vision on the subject because we've got the pier lights. <coughs> People are still working. The last time we've been here, it was just, it was very quiet. Here's a boat here, right? And I think at some day, some stage, it's just going to go for scrap. It's been sitting there a while. You know, if I put a bit of a, a watery effect, you think I'm down diving on a wreck. But that is a boat that's been sitting for a while. And it's gone beyond its useful use, and it's just sitting there. I'll go on another bit past this van. The boats are all in lines. Actually, I'm not too unfamiliar with this area because I actually trained in fish farming down here. And we actually had a small boat down here that we used to use for training in that. And the last time, last week when I was down here, I didn't see the boat, so it could be it could be in dry dock getting fixed or something. Yeah, if that water looks green, it is. It's green, it smells like fish and diesel. It's it's pretty horrible. I'm going to go to the other side of this truck in case I trip over a, a rope or something. There's a school here, right? It's a fishery school. And it's for fish farming training and uh, fish farming training and uh, skipper training. How to work on these boats, you know? And there's a school up the road and it's kind of like in the shape of a boat. And inside it, it's got a big, great big massive diesel engine. The pistons on them are about the size of dinner plates. And it takes ages for it to start. You know, it starts off kind of slow. And it gains momentum and that. And that's to train people in mechanics. <coughs> I've done the basic mechanics for smaller boats, you know because I wasn't involved with these bigger boats. You know, just uh, small, basic boats for going out to fish farms. There's a big, uh, there's a big, uh, maybe that boat has had fish in it or something. Some nets and pots. It's actually quite mild tonight, and not as breezy. We were here last week, 
and I was here not this far I was on a I was on a on a pier between here and Derry and it was quite gusty actually so some fish boxes Sean Oak 2 Those stink. But way back years ago, Johnny Gold Coast, this would be buzzing, especially kitty bags with fish. And I don't know if it's the EU or what happened, but very often you'll see a lot of boats sitting doing nothing. I don't know, it's, is it to do with quotas or whatever? I've sort of lost track. But, way back in the day, let's see if I can go past this truck. Way back in the day, Kitty Beggs was the richest town in Ireland. And it was for fish. And I remember as a kid, I seen a fisherman and he had black brand new Mercedes and he had ropes and crap in the back seat. You know, as if the car was just nothing. You know? Back then, you know the Ford F-150, those kind of trucks? They weren't as common now. But just all I always remember is black brand new Mercedes covered in crap and full of ropes and boys and anchors and chains and everything in the back seat of this brand new Mercedes is that fucking nice We're not going to too close. It is, you know. And it's not it's not that it's freezing or snowing here. I was used to pack pack fish. So at some stage during the day there was fish up off loaded here. <laughs> Do you know something, even just this walk, I feel a lot better, because I was going to go to bed tonight feeling like crap, and I'll probably wake up this <laughs> tomorrow morning feeling the same way, because I've got out and just got a bit of fresh air change from the four walls do you know no doubt I'll get back to it you know I'm just going through a rough patch with some sort of a gangway for a, a boat there Two quite large boats over there, and a smaller one. And sort of a smaller pier. It's kind of a sheltered area. It's kind of in a sheltered area. And do you know, even in a kind of a bit of a windy day, you have the boat parked in there, and you think, ah, it's not too gusty. And then you get past that wall. Once you hit past that wall and that's when the waves start hitting you you can actually see you can see the the, the movement of the water there we're in 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 
in the sheltered area, it's pretty still. But I, I got caught off guard a couple of times. Coming flying out on the boat. And the next thing, I passed that wall, and the next thing, the current hits my back. What they used to do is they used to have up close to one of the beaches, which I've filled on three four. Just off the beach, they would set up salmon cages. No, there weren't salmon, there were trout. Trout cages. Small ones, not big massive ones. Like. And our job was to go out every day to these salmon cages about six or seven hundred yards offshore. But we'd have to go We'd have to go around that way, sort of thing. And uh, we'd have to go out every morning and feed the fish. Do you know? And if we were, we were, if we, we had the boat at the beach, we'd only have to 600 yards, but we'd have to go, the, we'd have to go the whole way around because the boat was parked here. It was a guest house beside the, the, the fishery school and that's where most of the students stayed and um, at the weekend sometimes I would call down to my other job which was a fish farm in my hometown and one of my colleague says are you staying in the hen house and I says I don't know what's the hen house oh he says you'll find out so anyway I pass no remarks I go back on Sunday night and very often I would home from my home to Greencastle here when Tommen was a thing head back to my place anyway the big guest house and then next morning we had breakfast full Irish breakfast two eggs as grand was filled us up for the morning was we when you're out of the sea you get hungry very quick we go out and do a few bits and pieces go back to the school until dinner time do a few lessons and then we head back for lunch and it's fucking scrambled egg and toast and I'm, I'm starting to I'm starting to put the dots together after lunch anyway we go back to the school we do another bit sometimes we do some practical stuff in the school like fixing engines and things then we're finished about half four, five o'clock or something like that. Go back anyway, it's dinner time. There was fucking omelette and something else for dinner. And I was saying, yeah, I'm in the fucking hen house. Turns out, the people that own the, uh, the guest house, they had a small holding with some chickens and stuff. And the eggs were very useful for the guest house, but uh, there was a lot of flatulence in that house, I have to say. There was even competitions. At night time, it was pretty boring here. Three pubs and a shop and a post office back in the day and even if you didn't drink you spent half your day in the pub half your evening in the pub you know sipping on a beer or 
having a a pissy drink. And the other thing we got involved in is darts. Darts was a big thing down here. And we had a dart board at the, the, he, the hen house. The, um, the guest house as well. So, I very quickly got into the darts. There's the, uh, there's the abandoned boat again. In a sorry state. But a lot of... A lot of metal scrap. I can't see that boat ever being restored. I'd say that's going for scrap at some point. It's been there a long time. I think it's been there in a couple of years. The workshop. Engineering. Sadly, there was a boat uh, here that we were familiar with because when the boats weren't out, people were in the pub and you met everybody, you know? The boat was called the Caricatine. And here's where the bit of the paranormal comes in. I'm going to uh, go across here and put on night vision and try to keep away from the bottle bin here. It was making noise. Very sure was six crew. Went out one day like like other tragic stories. They went out and they never came back. And it was a mid-sized trawler. Like one of the trawlers that I just showed you and stuff. Disappeared. Nobody was ever recovered and the boat was never seen again. And then there was all sorts, you know, when things like that happen, there's all sorts of conspiracy theories uh, one of them was the theory that a Russian uh, submarine possibly got tangled up in its netting and dragged the boat and dragged it, do dragged it down to the depths of the ocean the other one was of course extraterrestrials which I'm not going to go into and uh, the other one was just a, a tragic accident you know just a plain old accident but there's families here they don't have a grave to go to you know and those people are never found now you know the boat was searched for and stuff but but you know, people are saying, how could you lose a big boat like that? And what it was explained to us was, along the Donegal shore, it's littered with, with wrecks. It, it's like try, trying to find a needle in a haystack, you know? But uh, we've got the town a little bit. Big city. And why is my car not locking? Oh, the, my lights on. I forgot to turn my light off. I'm having trouble with the central locking in this car. Let me just turn this thing off as I turned it on to get myself sorted here. And you see it won't lock now. Please beat me off, that's good. That's good. Don't know if you're going to see much. Oh, what I was telling you about the hen house. A couple of years ago, I, I drove, I drove to, to uh, Green Castle to do a video on the 
the yellow house. You know, the yellow abandoned house. And I discovered the hen house was gone. And then there instead was a, a, a bunch of apartments. Oh, the, the, there's a Green Castle Castle. We've been in the Green Castle Castle. It's somewhere along. Might have been a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, I went inside the the Green Castle Castle, done a few spirit box sessions. Oh yeah, fuck, I have a, a story about the Green Castle Castle. Right. The people that own it at the hen house told us the story about the castle. And it said it was very haunted. And you know when you have fishermen in a house, real tough guys. They go, ah, bullshit, you know? We go up there, there's no ghosts. Bunch of them went up there, and they were in the area where I was in, the last video I'd done there. They were in, in this kind of a, one of the very few areas that has a little bit of a roof on it. The rest of it's just bits of walls. They came running down the road into the fucking house and they're shaking like a leaf. We were saying, what the fuck's wrong with you? It's this, when they were up there, this big shadow figure came out of the darkness and came running toward, came towards them very quickly. And they said they didn't have time to even look around. They just ran. But they were less brave when they got back to the house than they were leaving to go up to the castle. I've been up there a few times. Done a few spurt box sessions and stuff. The only thing that scared me was a flipping... a, uh, a bat. The furry port. I remember that pub. It's very flippin' quiet, isn't it? Across there's the post office. There's a tiny post office. A lot has kind of changed. There's a I can't remember what was here before, but these are newer houses. But there's... Oh, for people that live in Australia and America and stuff. It's called... The Postal Service in Ireland is called On Post. On Post. And there's the logo there. Oh, behind the wall is all lobster pots. Oh, we're up at the we're up at the school now. But this is the site right here. There used to be a big garden and a big fancy house. Now it's just. Now it's been replaced by this. Somebody bought the land and just built these apartments. Private. I'd be more accurate in saying that the house actually stood there. And my bedroom was at the back and I looked out over the sea and you could see across to McGilligan and everything. <coughs> and I used to have my CB aerial hanging out the window 
and I used to be able to talk to other people over in McGilligan. That was when CBs were a thing. Do you know, it was a phase there where CBs were on the top of people's cars and on the roof of people's houses. <coughs> But uh, I was into CBs at that time and I brought a mobile uh, CB with me and I put an external area hanging out the window. Kind of a makeshift kind of an idea. But I was able to talk to people across the sea over at McGilligan. The castle in. The entrance to... Oh... That's going to bring us possibly to. How you doing? There's a fort up there, right? And there was a there was a, a pub up there at one time, and it was closed for a long time. And actually, a friend of mine that worked for a radio station says, "If you can get into that pub, please do so." We done a radio program, and unfortunately, it was a radio program. But they said they had buckets thrown at them and everything. And you could hear the commotion, you could hear the fear and stuff, but no visuals. And she sent me all the files and I have them in a hard drive somewhere. But I never got to I never got to investigate in the pub, but it's locked down now. And it's kinda of turned into some sort of a touristy thing I yet have to find out but I'm having a rest for a second because I'm out of breath and this car is about to run over me I'm right on the corner of the flipping road there's the school don't know if you can see the sign BAM Ireland's Seafood Development Agency. In Irish, it's called Bordy Schimara. And I'll get up to the. Nobody, nobody uh, stays at night, sort of thing. But that side of the building is where the big engine is for the boat. And if it was bright, you'd see a chimney at the top. Over the other side, you see on the top of the roof, there's hoists and stuff. That's to train people to do rope work and stuff. But that's the fish farming school. I'm going to head back. we done all sorts of things there. First aid, fire, fighting. I actually got my VHF, VHF license for marine radio to do the test in there, which was quite easy. And I never got to use it. But say if you were doing Say if you were going on to the Navy or anything to do with boats, that license would have been very, very uh, useful, you know. Don't know if you can see, light isn't as brilliant up here. But we didn't have to go far for our dinner. Even if it was eggs. But a lot of things have changed. Things have... You know, bars a long time ago were just bars. The only food you got in bars were crisps and peanuts. Now, now you have restaurant food and stuff. And it's sort of catering for 
a bit of tourism that comes out here because there is nice beaches here. One major beach and a couple of the small ones. And if you're a long time viewer of my channel, you would have seen a lot of those beaches. Nice quiet beaches. I suffered a bit of a post muscle when I was crossing the road. Crossing the road to my car after coming out of the takeaway, I put the muscle in the back of my leg and it's pretty sore. But there's the post office. And actually, it looks exactly the same as it did. When I was there. Post offices now, they're normally in shops. You know you'll have a centra or a, a spar and you have a spo post office in the corner of the supermarket. Way back in the old days, post office was just made just strictly post office. Letters and parcels. No gifts or souvenirs or, you know, you go into a post office now, you can get all sorts of things. Birthday cards and Christmas cards and Easter cards and pens and stationery and all that kind of stuff. It just looks like it just, it never changed. Rocklands. Take away and sit in. And it's fucking closed. If I can remember, oh yes. This was a shop. What time is it? It's only ten to nine, that shop is closed. ATM, it's probably inside the, inside the shop, but back in the day, I think that was the only shop actually. So when you went home at the weekend, if you wanted some goodies that weren't here, you had to bring them with you, because that was the only shop. Now as far as I know, just coming into town, there's a petrol station. Back in the day, petrol stations only sold petrol, but I think there's a shop. It's a nice boat. We're back at, we're back at the pier. I'm gonna leave it for now. At least I got out. At least I got out. Do you know? As some of you will know, I do ghost hunting and, and paranormal stuff. And I do other stuff, like if I go to an interesting place, I'll, I'll film that too. So I don't... I don't, I don't narrow myself down to just one genre. There's a light in the sky way over there. I think it's a helicopter or something, but you're not going to see it. Actually,
No, it's gone the opposite direction. But anyway, you know, there's all kinds of different content. I've, I've actually covered the Donegal International Rally, went to interesting places. This is just one of these random things. Anyway, I'm going to go. Hope you enjoyed me walking. I'll see you in the next one. How do you turn this off? <laughs>